All right, Algebra 2, this is the second part of the triangle trig review, the last part of this week. Uh, we're going to introduce the trig, the three main trig functions, okay, and the ratios that they set up between the triangle sides. Now, what we did last uh, in part one uh, is we were able to identify the hypotenuse, the adjacent, and the opposite sides. So those three sides make up all the trig ratios. All right, the ones we're going to focus on are sine, cosine, tangent. Now, again, this is a trig review. You should be somewhat familiar with those three already. Uh, and each one has its own ratio, its own fraction that creates it. Okay. So they're all involving an angle. Okay. So we'll start with sine. The sine of an angle, okay, usually we mark the angle as theta or alpha or beta, some Greek letter. The sine of theta is always going to be the ratio, and again, theta is angle, so the sine of an angle is always the same ratio. It's the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse side. Okay. So remember, the hypotenuse is always across from the right angle, and the opposite side is always across from the angle theta, whatever angle you're working with. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Okay. Cosine is the ratio of the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse side. Okay. And the adjacent side is the side next to an angle. That's not the hypotenuse or the opposite side. And again, the hypotenuse is always across from the angle. All right, and then lastly is tangent. The tangent of an angle is equal to the ratio of the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. Okay. So sine opposite over hypotenuse, cosine adjacent over hypotenuse, tangent opposite over adjacent. A lot of people use the acronym Sokotoa. Okay. Where each first letter represents the trig function. And the second two letters represent the sides of the triangle. Okay. So you will have to memorize that. We're actually not going to do any of the... We're going to use them, but we're not going to set any of them up today. Okay. So today all we're going to do is talk about setting up a trig ratio, which we're not, which are already going to be set up, and we're going to find the missing parts. Okay, so there's three scenarios here. There's three types of problems you could have. You could be missing the top part of your ratio, okay, or the top side. You could be missing the bottom part of your ratio, the bottom side, or you could be missing the angle. Okay, so we're going to run through one of each of those, and uh, your homework will be, you know, a couple of each. All right, so the first scenario is solving for the variable in the numerator okay which means you know the angle you know the bottom side of the ratio but you don't know the top side okay so this is as simple as solving for x now you will need a calculator to solve all of these uh just because we, you can't do trig functions by hand all right so if you have the variable on top okay it's on top of a fraction you always need to get rid of the bottom of the fraction okay so to get rid of the bottom of the fraction, you're just going to multiply both sides by 15. Okay. Okay. So this is only when your variable is in the top of that ratio. Okay. Fifth, x over 15 times 15, the 15 parts cancel out. Okay. So really we're left with x equaling 15 times the cosine of 60. Now again, you will need a calculator to figure this out. Okay. If you're using a graphing calculator, make sure you're in uh, degrees mode. Okay. And if you have a question about that, you can just email me. Uh, so 15 times cosine of 60, just punch it into the calculator. You should get about 7.5. Okay. So that's going to be the missing side length of the triangle. 
infinite. So that's scenario one. If your variable is on top, just multiply by the multiply both sides by the denominator. And you'll be done. Scenario two is what if your variable is on the denominator? Okay. So you know the angle. Let's assume this is in degrees. You know the top side, but you don't know the bottom side. Okay. In this scenario, and it always works like this. Okay. So I'm just going to show the shortcut, not why it happens. In this scenario, you could just switch the position of the denominator and the left side. Okay. So if you want to find the tangent of 25 equals 14 over x, you just switch those two positions and make it x equal 14 divided by the tangent of 25. Now again, that only works when the variable is the denominator. Okay. Really what's happening algebraically is we're multiplying both sides by x to get rid of the fraction, and then we're dividing by tangent 25. Okay. But since it always works like this, you could just think of it as swapping those two positions. Okay. Again, just punch it into the calculator. 14 divided by tan 25 is 30. Okay. Now again, that's a side length, not an angle. So the length of the missing side of the triangle, which was probably denoted as x, is 30. Okay. All right, so those first two scenarios are if you're missing a side length. Okay, so you're either going to be missing the top side or the bottom side. The last scenario is you could be missing an angle. Okay. Now, if you're missing an angle, you have to set up an inverse trig ratio of the sides to find the missing angle. Now, on the graphing calculators, you would just hit second and then whatever trig function it is. Okay. So in this case, we don't know angle B. Okay, this is our variable. Okay. We don't know angle B. Okay. So basically, we need to get rid of that sign part. Because again, you always want to isolate what you're looking for. Well, you can't just divide out a function. You can't just divide both sides by sign because sign needs an input. So what we do instead is we take the inverse. Okay. So if you want to get B by itself, okay, you use the inverse trig ratio. And the inverse trig ratio is always denoted as sine. It's not really raised to the negative first, but it's not really it's not raised. It just stands for inverse. Okay, so the sine inverse or the cosine inverse or the tan inverse. And you do that to both. If you take sine inverse of sine, the trig part goes away. Okay, so we're going to take b equal to sine inverse of three over four. Oops, four, not five. Okay. And again, that's something you would just type in directly into the calculator. Second sine. 3 divided by 4 in the parentheses, hit enter. Okay. Now remember, this one is an angle. And you should get an angle of about 48.6 degrees. Okay. Those are actually easier than solving as you're just punching into the calculator. All right, so those are the three scenarios we're going to run into. Next week we'll talk, we'll actually set up some of these up. Uh, but again, today's will be all set up for us. Okay. So again, variable on top, multiply by the denominator. Variable on the denominator, you're going to divide by the, t the sine function or the, tan, the, the trig function. And if you have a missing angle, take the sine inverse of the ratio side. All right. Check Google Classrooms for the work. Have a great day.